playing something like that. It was a, a great opportunity today to talk about the uh, the Mark One Tone Bender. I've got this pedal. It's never really been played. I bought it as a well. It was a pure indulgence, but I'd never owned one, and I wanted one all my life. And um, I got this opportunity to get it, so I got it. But we've never really sat down and played it and let the world hear what it sounds like. So I figured today, with Barry around, it might be a good opportunity to do that. Yep. So I suppose, uh, as far as London music shops are concerned, we've been there pretty much from the, from the beginning. Um, my dad and my uncle got their first shop in the early 60s, after my uncle had been working as sales manager at Tom Jennings' shop in Charing Cross Road. The, people called it the Vox Shop, and that's where he sold stuff to the Beatles and the Stones and the Shadows and every, anyone who was anyone, really. Once uh, he got a shop with my dad and they opened their own store, um, the guys from Vox came to him with, these, um, with this idea for this dirty sounding guitar sound, which Tom Jennings had no interest in. So it's, they didn't pinch it, Tom wasn't interested. And so Larry and my dad said, you know, we can do something with that. We, we can, um, we can, uh, take this pedal and offer it to people, we're sure as people are going to buy it, and sure as hell they did. Um, it went out to the right players, because everyone was kind of frequenting the West End at that point. They'd come into town and they'd go to Carnaby Street, get their check pants, a bit like these. And then they'd um, go to the West End and check out what was going on, if there were any funky guitars, and I suppose if there was any innovations, and the fuzz box was a big one. So it's, uh, and it just transformed the way people played and the way people thought about things and it changed the way music was made. Um, it's something I'm you know, incredibly lucky to be, have this amazing legacy of, and so, you know, it's really great to still be making them and it's great that people still want them. So, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. So today we thought it would be a great opportunity to play my old original 1965 Tone Bender, which has never really been put through its paces um, and so yeah it's a, a great day um, and it's uh, just brilliant to be doing it with Barry here and and the real thing which uh, was one of the the 12 that was given away in 1965 in a uh, in a competition in Beat Instrumental so in this competition you had to put all the parts of satisfaction uh, the most important parts I think they gave you things like was it mixed vocal? Was it the fuzz sound? Was it Keith's guitar lick? What was it that was the most important thing? You put them in order, one to ten, and if you got it right, you got the chance to win a tone bendy and name count of that. And I got this off one of the winners of the competition, so it came right from the guy. His name was there, printed in black and white, in beat instrumental. Um, and he, um, he was in a band in Scotland when he was 14 years old when he got this, and he's had it ever since, and until I got it back. So uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's my uh, you know one of my most prized possessions, and uh, so I guess we should uh, plug it in and check it out for proper. Yeah. Okay, guitar wise, we have uh, a 1956 Fender Esquire, uh, which is basically the same as the Telecaster, but only with the bridge pickup. So single pickup guitar, um, and it's pretty similar, I believe, to what Jeff Beck was using in the Yardbirds at the time. Um, you know, when he was using the Tone Bender. Um, also other players of note used them, like Luther Perkins, Johnny Cash, which is probably another famous guy who played in Esquire, you know. Okay. <laughs> nice, 
Fender sound, right? So, do you want to step on it? Shall I step on. on it? Can you imagine what that was like if you'd never heard that before? It's good now, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you walked into this music shop and they said, try this out, and you go, bling, bling, ah! Must have been amazing. Must have been amazing. Wrong pedal. Should put on again? Yeah. So I'm trying to think of some things that... Like Yardbirds things. Like I can only give you everything by them, you know. Oh god, yeah. Start the surf. Just three note riff is instantly massive, you know. It's interesting what it did to those simple, what those simple riffs did with this. Sound, and even there, know. listen to that, I sort of want to go. You know, yeah, so it's, effect, it's, this it? was how a head banging started. You know, a few years later, people were do, do, knocking hell out of themselves when they were listening to rock music. This was, this was the beginning. It really was. I mean, it's, it's uh, I, you know, I don't want to make too big a thing of it, but it really did change how people played and... And music, you know, it has this incredible knock-on effect to people and, and what they do and how they think and how they behave. Well, it certainly had a huge, you know, effect on how I behaved as I grew up. You know, I grew up listening to punk rock. God, that changed how people behaved. But at this point, it was probably one of the biggest changes in music ever. Right. I'm, not, I'm not a massive pedal fan, really, mm. but I like these because the sounds are raw and they're sort of exciting. And for years, I sort of avoided using pedals, and then when I started making records that used some effects, I started using them, but very primitive stuff like fuzz or mm. like a slapback echo or yeah, something. Yeah. Yeah. But with this, you still feel like it's part of an organic chain, really. You know, it doesn't feel super processed. Although I like some music with a lot of effects in it, it's just not what I do, you know. So this is our current um, model of a, of a Mark One. Well, one of four, we, we made four versions. Um, but this one is a replica of, of my own um, prized Mark I that we were just listening to. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, this is actually the prototype. Um, we made 50 of them, but this one's made by a guy called David May, and he's possibly the best builder of this, well, of fuzz, well, maybe in the world. Who knows? Who knows? It's not a cheap pedal. It's been made to ridiculously high standards um basics i'm a mad person and uh, i just wanted to make this crazy oh, good pedal right as well yeah oh, yeah they're right yeah of course yeah um no, i'll tell you what's right i mean how who would do this so every every metal company i went to when i had they pressed the feet out they were just slightly wrong the wrong shape so i had a press built to press them out the right shape you know it cost a lot of money but I think that's I just wanted right. it to be I think right. That's right. It's got to be right. Oops. Putting the paint on, you know, this this isn't um, sprayed or painted on. This is put on with a, a sponge by hand. This hammer right. on. Yeah, it's not, you know, it's not the actions of a normal person. But uh, to, to, <laughs> to be honest, it, it, what it is, is it, sad. it's not sad. You know, when people copy our products, I take it as a huge compliment. But some people take things a bit too far. They use our trademarks. They pass themselves off as us. They, you know, they're just, it's not right. So I just wanted to make a pedal that was so good that it couldn't be um, confused with, with a cheaper mm. copy. Right. Oh, it's on. Right. 
Okay. <laughs> Mad, bit mad, bit different. Yeah. Isn't it? Well, most people who would make a new pedal would make it without those mad little crazy bits. I mean, it's almost psychedelic. That, yeah. yeah, you need mm -hmm. that. Though. So inside here, this is our version made by Stu Castledine. Um, is the very earliest circuit we could find of a tone bender. So the first time anyone ever heard a tone bender fuzz, this should be what they heard. This could be fun. We'll plug this in. Right. Okay. Alrighty. <laughs> This enclosure, this never really went into production. It was used as sort of prototypes, and they made Mark II circuits in it. But also, this one has a, a 1.5 circuit in it, which is a two transistor circuit. And this one has the Range Master name on it. So we made it for Dallas, who owned the uh, trademark Range Master. That became Dallas Arbiter. And this circuit is what they used in the Dallas Arbiter fuzz face, which is, of course, famously is Hendrix's fuzz. So in a funny kind of way, what I'm holding is the prototype of Jimi Hendrix's fuzz pedal, which is uh, pretty damn cool. So, there you have my second most prized possession. Yeah, that is under there. Oh, input there. That's yeah, because fuzz face... the way around. Yeah, on the wrong side, aren't they? Mm -hmm. That's one thing I'll better carried on doing that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Steve Williams Mark One, so I think this, the way I think of it is that it nails the sort of David Bowie, um, Mick Ronson type guitar sounds. It's very thick, it's very fat, it's incredibly responsive with this hideous rebellious edge. Um, I think it's a wonderful, wonderful pedal. Um, should we check this out? Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. This is nice. Yeah, it's a nice guitar. This is a, a 1959 Gibson Les Paul Standard. Um, I can't tell you the exact story in detail, but it's um, it's most likely one of the first Sunburst Les Pauls 
to be exported out of the US to be sold in the UK. Wow. And it was uh, ended up in McCormack's, which was a famous shop in Glasgow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gone now. I remember going in there. I mm. used to buy stuff out of there. Really? Yeah, little, little bits of spares and stuff. When I, I think they were there before us. And, uh, That's how it's it's, um, it's only had two owners since new, but everything on it is original, apart from the frets and a new nut, which... Um, oh, what a beautiful thing. Um, and it's a pretty incredible thing, really beautiful. Let's see what it does. So... This is the Ian Sherwin one, and this has just got a slightly more modern take on the um, circuit. I think this is the most probably instantly usable of, of the Mark ones we make. Um, looks really cool as well. I love that little font. So at the time, they were just obviously experimenting with different letter sets and different bits of font. So I think I don't think there are any more. So they're the all four. put on by hand originally. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my cousin Rosita is a bit older than me I'm sure she won't mind me saying that but so she was around kicking about that scene which must have been amazing so she was there when all these guys came so she remembers the Beatles in the shop she remembers Hendrix in the shop she oh, it must have been see it doesn't matter what I do so I run Macari's but it doesn't matter who I sell to I can sell to the biggest band it doesn't matter my dad sold stuff to Hendrix and the Stones and the Beatles I, I'll never never compete yeah. Just amazing, just amazing. I've heard my tone benders properly, and uh, just thanks so much for coming down oh, and uh, us, being Pleasure. here at Tone Absolutely Bender Central. Pleasure. Yeah, very cool. Well, how cool is that? Oh, that show plays on me.